Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and we're going to be looking at chapter 13 of subject CT1, which is on arbitrage. And arbitrage, it's pretty cool. Um, it's a way to make money um, without taking any risk. And that's actually, yeah, let's, let's actually start with that. The definition of arbitrage is to make an immediate risk-free profit or to put, have a zero cost and have a probability of making a risk-free profit. So what that basically means is that if you're very smart, if you're very clever, and you can calculate the price of assets very accurately, you can make a lot of money according to arbitrage. Because arbitrage, it, it does exist, um, not as much as it used to, or I don't think the opportunities are as big as they used to because so many people are arbitrage hunting and looking for these things. And we'll see as soon as an arbitrage opportunity exists and people act on it, that arbitrage disappears. Um, so when we come to actuarial science or, or when we become investors, we assume that arbitra arbitrage opportunities do not exist. So... This is not the best assumption, but we just make this assumption uh, because of this theory known as, known as the law of one price. And that says that if something has the same cash flow, it will therefore have the same price. Now, like I said, this is just a simplified um, assumption. You will find arbitrage in reality, or well, in the real world, but they will be closed out very quickly and... Unless you're a high-speed trader with a supercomputer on Wall Street, um, somebody else is probably going to beat you to it. So that's just a little introduction on arbitrage. You may get a question just asking to explain what it is and why it doesn't exist. Um, but the majority of this chapter focuses on something known as a forward contract. Okay, And a forward contract, it's kind of... It's a little bit of a weird thing the first time you come across it, but I'm going to hopefully explain it to you guys now, and it's going to make a lot more sense. Uh, but basically, you have this contract called a forward, and it's between two parties or two people. Um, one person is the buyer, one person is the seller, and the contract is on a specified asset, um, it has a specified price, and it has a specified date. So let's... Let's make this even easier with a quick example. Uh, I'm a farmer and I have to sell apples. So the specified asset is the apples. The specified date is, say, next year's harvest. Okay, and I'm the seller of apples and there's some investor or some market person who's going to, they're going to be the buyer of these apples. And now what we need to do is we need to work on what is the specified price? What should this price be? Now, what we do is we assume that the price of the apple today is going to be the same as the price of the apple in one year's time, just making adjustments for um, interest rates and various other things. So let's actually get into this over here. Where we see K0, um, this is the forward price at time zero. Uh, so remember, we, we're talking about time. And like I always mention, draw out a time line. And, and it'll make these calculations so much easier. So we have time zero, and then we're going to have time N, and there's going to be some stuff happening in between. So we have the forward price at time zero. We have the security price at time zero, or the price of the apples. Um, T would be the length of the term. Um, I is the risk-free effective rate of interest. Very important that's risk-free. I would be the present value of income payments during the term. And D would be the dividend yield received continuously. Let's not worry about I and D too much. Um, let's just focus. So let's say we've got our apples. Um, apples aren't going to give us an income or a dividend yield. So we can simplify it. Uh, to something like this, K equals SO um, E delta T. So how do you prove this? And this is something that I did struggle with initially, um, but the more you practice it, the more it becomes more intuitive. Uh, 
Because the way we're going to prove that k is equal to SOE delta t is we're going to set up two portfolios. Okay, and here we go. Portfolio one is to go long in a forward contract. So long means to buy. So we're going to go long in a forward contract to buy one asset at the forward price k with maturity at time t. So what we're saying is, um, let's say our asset is the Apple. We want to buy the Apple, um, say it's going to be in the future at a price K. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is in order to have enough money to buy that Apple, we're going to put in an amount now uh, to purchase it later. But that amount is going to be accumulating interest. So we don't have to, so let's say K is equal to 10. We don't have to put in 10 Rand now to buy the Apple one year later. We can put in say 9 Rand or 8 Rand um, and then interest rate is going to accumulate that value to 10 Rand. Um, so we're going to be putting in a little bit less. So that's the important thing. You can put in a little bit less now in order to buy in the future. So we take this little amount and we invest it in an investment that earns the risk-free uh, rate of interest. Okay. So on the one side we have Ke negative delta T um, in the bank. So we put this money in the bank. Portfolio number two is that we actually purchase one asset now at market price. Now my Apple example does break down a bit because in one year's time the Apple will be fraught. But let's pretend that the Apple doesn't go fraught. Um, so we purchase our one, our one Apple now at market price, uh, say 10 Rand. Okay, so now uh, at time T, so these are our two portfolios. So portfolio one is I've got some money in the bank. Portfolio two is I've actually bought the asset. Okay, now let's look at our timeline. At time T or at the end of our timeline, the money in the first portfolio is going to accumulate to that value K, which is then used to buy the one apple um, under the forward contract. So, and because we've still got that Apple, we can see that portfolio one has one unit of asset. And so the payout will be exactly the same. Therefore, by assuming no arbitrage, the two parts must have the same price at time zero. So what we've done is we've shown that the Apple uh, will be 10 Rand. And this money that we've invested in the bank has accumulated to 10 Rand and we've purchased the Apple. Now what we do is we work backwards, so we go back to time zero because we want to know how much should that amount be. And what we see here is at time zero, part, portfolio one's price is uh, Ke uh, negative delta T and portfolio two price is SO. Hence, we, have, we can set them equal because we've shown that at time T they're going to be equal and then what we do is we flip the interest rate onto the other one and bam, we've got the value of our, uh, of our forward. So the interesting thing about this is, is that you can use this to now set up these forward contracts. Now, why are forward contracts important? Let's say I'm a farmer and I've got my apples and I know that the price of apples is going to fluctuate. If the price of the apple is 8 Rand, I'm not going to have enough money to continue farming next year. However, I do know that the, the value of the apple could go up to as much as 12 Rand, and that would be fantastic. But I don't want to take that risk. So what I do is I enter this forward contract with someone who is prepared to take the risk. And what we do is we set the price at 10 Rand. So we set the price as 10 Rand today, and in one year's time, the price could be 8 Rand, in which case I've gained, um, and I'm happy because I've got 10 Rand now instead of 8 Rand, or the price is 12 Rand, and in a way, I've lost a bit, but I'm still happy because I got that 10 Rand, which let me continue farming. So some people take out the Ford contract in order to, as a defensive position, in our case, the farmer, they removed risk by entering this forward contract. But other people, like the buyer, he has increased his risk by going into these forward contracts. 
And by increasing his risk, he is giving himself the opportunity to make money if the Apple price goes up, but he's also exposing himself to lose money if the Apple price goes down. So this is where some people think they're very clever, they develop sophisticated models to try to track the price of apples, and then they look at forward contracts and they think they can use their mathematics to beat it. Some of them do well, some of them don't do so well. Um, maybe you'll be the guy who makes the model uh, that is able to accurately price apples. Um, interestingly en uh, enough though, is that don't go and use this formula, like don't go to the stock market, do your calculations, be like, oh, this value is not the same, I've got an arbitrage opportunity. There may be times when your future value um, or the price of, you know, the, of the forward contract is going to be worth more than, um, than the price of the asset discounted. And the reason for this, it's, it's not in your notes, so you don't have to know about it, but there's the case of normal backwardation or contagion. And what these mean is, in the one case, there's one well, contagion. Let's say you're buying your future on cattle. There's a massive cost of storing cattle. If you're buying a thousand cattle, um, it's much better to enter into a future contract. So let's say you think the price of cattle is going to go up. It's much better to enter the, the future contract than to actually buy a thousand cattle because where are you going to put them? And then you need to feed them and take care of them and it's just expensive. But So if people think that the price of cattle is going to increase, that demand for that future is also going to increase which is going to alter the price and this uh, relationship is not always going to stand. So like I say, when you go to the stock market, don't blindly use this. Always think before you invest. But like I said, we're going a little bit ahead of the course. This is something you'll learn in CA1 or ST5 or SA5 or ST9, one of the specialist subjects um, in finance. Um, finally, in this chapter, there is the value of the forward contract. And what this is, is as time goes by, um, the price of the apple is going to fluctuate. And you may want to, let's say, uh, half a year goes by as an investor, the Apple price has shot up to 12 Rand. You can then take out an alternative or an opposite uh, contract, close out your position and get your value. Or you could just sell your forward contract um, and cash in now. But you need to know this formula in order to do so. So let's quickly look at this formula and then this video is done. So value of a forward contract. So we set up at time zero a term of t, we've got the forward price of ko. And we set up at time t, uh, this is little t, um, term of t minus little t, the forward price. So like I say in our example, let's just make little t half the year. Now if delta is the risk-free um, interest rate, then the value at time t of the original forward to the buyer is as followed. We subtract the two amounts, and we discount it by half a year. And that will be the value of the long forward contract. Um, and if it's a short forward contract, that means you're the guy doing the opposite thing, then it's just the negative of that. So what you might do with these questions is you'll have to calculate KO, you're gonna have to calculate KT, and then you can use this um, formula to calculate what the difference is going to be. Um, you don't have to learn this formula for heart because like I said, if you've drawn out your time uh, lines and you understand uh, the time value of money and discounting and all that type of stuff, you'll see that this is very intuitive. So you don't have to worry about learning all these formulas. You can derive them from first principles if you think. And that's what you guys must always do with actuarial science is think and not just blindly learn something. So why is Vs equal to minus Vl? think about it. And yeah, that is basically it for arbitrage. It's a, it's a lovely subject. Um, this is something that you are going to come back to again and again in your actuarial uh, career if you do follow the financial path. So do get a good understanding of it. And yeah, that is the end of this video. The next video, we're going to be looking at term structure of interest rates and yeah, stuff gets pretty cool there. But that's going to be much later. Um, I need to study for 
for my subject ST9. Um, I hope you guys have a great day and thank you so much for watching. Cheers.